Harry Potter is like the perfect milk toast IP for the, you know, millennial high lick, you know, low creativity, low tolerance for anything too deep. You know, it's just much like my generation. It's just fucking lame. And uh, it's interesting to compare Harry Potter to other franchises. I mean, fantasy is generally the realm of the white nerd, isn't it? You know, even when you compare Harry Potter to George Lucas and Star Wars, which is crypto fantasy, somehow the flailing ineptitude of Lucas is in endearing and actually quite creative and far deeper, <laughs> even though it's, you know, obviously Star Wars is not particularly deep, but the Joseph Campbell, like Western hero's journey at its core, it's far deeper and more coherent and has a deeper message than Harry Potter, which, I mean, this is what happens when you have an entire fictional universe created by a, you know, insufferable boomer Karen. I mean, I guess that's what JK Rowling is at the end of the day, but in recent years, she has become a lightning rod for the trans community's just general malevolent hatred, you know what I mean? She has become a symbol of transphobia, which is so fucking funny to me, but, you know. <laughs> JK, who, who was once kind of a spearhead culturally of neoliberal feminism, right? Where we got a shit on men and, uh, you know, yeah, like British, British culture is racist. You know, she was right there at the forefront of the previous paradigm of wokeism, where it was all about like white Karen activists. But, you know, the intersectionality and the, the trans adjacent aspects of wokeism, right? You know, I mean, they, they've kind of come to the forefront in recent years. And JK Rowling is the perfect representation of the left's tendency to eat itself. It's like constantly at war with the world, but also itself. JK, she was tip of the spear. Now she's donezo and exists now kind of like this symbolic figure of the anti-trans agenda, you know? Like feminism in its kind of boomery neoliberal form, they've really dug their heels in on this whole trans-exclusionary feminist identity. And these feminists are so fucking dumb that they don't understand that their agitation and their praxis created the conditions for the rise of the modern transgender movement. I mean, it's a direct result, right? When you deconstruct culture and gender norms to such a ridiculous degree that women are no longer able to define themselves biologically, well, you get what you deserve. I mean, applying the Marxist lens to literally everything, including human biology, you know, you're going to end up with nothing but chaos and the inability to define anything because according to a lot of feminist doctrine and also the postmodernists as well the act of definition is foul logocentric it's like a swinging dick thing like a masculine sexist thing like i exist you exist that level of certainty is problematic it is an aspect of the patriarchy right because the patriarchy has defined women apparently forever and it's been oppressive and now it's time for women to define themselves well sorry you don't get to do that i think that trans women are going to define what a woman is because if you say that a woman is you know a human being that can give birth and displays the features and characteristics of the sexually dimorphic human race you're a bigot and it's time for you to be cancelled and it also makes jk rowling a terrorist or something and this is 2023 and if you disagree with any of this again get in the gulag you know Shut the fuck up. Women don't actually exist, okay? That's, and it, the, the science supports it, okay? So, you know, get in the gulag, keep quiet, and definitely don't buy Hogwarts Legacy because there's a, a campaign happening right now. They're saying that you're a bad person if you buy this game. It's not enough to just criticize JK and throw her under the bus, but still like Harry Potter, no. Remember, we're dealing with Bolshevik tactics here. Harry Potter equals fascism. Things move quickly in clown world. And, you know, I'm sitting here not interested in Hogwarts legacy, really, in the slightest. But the sheer butthurt, the complaining and the crying coming from the trans community online, it's hilarious. I've seen the release of this game and the anticipation compared to 1930s Weimar Germany that the trans community are being made to feel so uncomfortable that they want to move to Canada they're going to leave the country. 
this is the reality for trans folks in Biden's America, guys. You know, it is no joke. They're like the Jews, you know, they're being persecuted on a level not dissimilar from Jews in Nazi Germany. That is what's going on. And if you, as in just random gamer, you're not political, but you like Harry Potter. If you pre-order or buy Hogwarts Legacy, you are supporting hate. You are supporting transphobia and the persecution and genocide of trans folks, right? So, Potter chuds, I hope you understand the gravity of the situation. I hope you understand what's at stake. And with that in mind, you know, I, I'm definitely pre-ordering Hogwarts Legacy. And I don't even give a shit if the game sucks. I'm simply just enjoying this admittedly pathetic <laughs> drama and butthurt because that's, that's who I am, you know? Every single franchise I ever was interested in was ruined by woke meddlers, you know? Every community I was ever a part of online was ruined by trans activists, so... It is what it is. Star Wars is paused now. Lord of the Rings is paused. You know, I mean, even Scooby-Doo went from an entertaining children's cartoon to this anti-white propaganda, this screed, this Indian woman screaming into the void, why won't Chad fuck me? And in the case of Velma, the critics are accusing the show of being some kind of satire of woke morality. They're accusing Mindy Carling of being like a right-wing mole or something. And they're deeming this show as like an embarrassing failure. And it is an embarrassing failure, but, you know, it would have been embraced outright in the previous paradigm of wokeism. And yet in the current year, you know, lacking that trans element, it's simply not extreme enough. It's not woke enough. And that's what culture is now. I mean, the, the trans identity is the new gay identity. It's the new marginalized group in society that has to be artificially astroturfed to the forefront of every conversation, to the zenith of every cultural debate. This is the most important thing in the world right now. So women, like I know you were agitating for feminism and rights and you wanna work and you know, you wanna be a man and you wanna have all of the upcomings that you think men get in society, even though being a man in clown world is one of the most depressing things ever, right? Well, no one cares what you want anymore, white women. You're the new white men, right? And black women, you're the new white women, okay? And trans women, I guess you're the new Jews, right? And everything's changing now. The progressive stack is reshuffling. And apparently, trans women are on the top of that, so. Black dudes? Sorry, <laughs> you, know? you better uh, develop a taste for girl dick because the times they are a changing. And actually, you know what? I, I think Jews are the new Jews and um, trans women are a new category of just supreme flawless being. So there you have it. But, you know, in my opinion, my theory is that in reality, it, it's just another Marxist bludgeon. The, the trans community are, are simply the new axe head by which our culture is smashed because the gay identity was being blunted. I mean, gay rights have been a thing for a long time. They can get married. They are favored when it comes to employment. You hear about the gay mafia in LA and in Silicon Valley where their identity group has become extremely elite. They are the elite of clown world. So they can no longer be used as this blunt force weapon against, you know, the previous culture, traditionalism, you know, things that are coherent, right? Western individualism, whatever we thought the West was supposed to represent during the majority of the 20th century, it has to be bludgeoned always. Otherwise it, it may regenerate. So we've swapped women's suffrage and poor women, and we've swapped the poor gays with possibly the most effective weapon, which is this trans weapon. Because the trans ideology, it smashes things that you would have thought were fundamental. You know, basic conceptions of, of gender. You know, the fact that we have sexually segregated bathrooms. Well, you'd think, well, okay, that makes sense. Not anymore, because it's smash, smash, smash. We are, we're getting down to the atomic particles of Western civilization. 
And we're just going to keep smashing because, again, like, you know, you would think like women's rights, that was supposed to be the big achievement of the left, right? We fought for women's rights in the 20th century and we won. Well, now you lose, all right? You know, you lose because women are no longer as good at being women as men are. I mean, it's almost like the trans community in their insane narcissistic delusion are declaring we're better at being women than women. But, you know, I mean, it is this fanaticism that gives the trans community their power and also, I guess, empowers the elites to kind of grant them more power. It's all about power, this entire thing. Because again, when you have someone so committed to their pathology that they can't even recognize what they are or anything, what the world is, and they can't tell good from bad anymore, you know, they're just going to destroy you if you disagree. Well, that's where we're at now. They are the shock troops of Globo Homo, clown world, you know? Like, they are the shock troops in this endless culture war. You biological woman, you think that you have the right to declare yourself a woman? No. You're going to accept whatever the definition is imposed on you by the woke elite. The woke elite will define everything. Truth doesn't exist. Truth is just a vestigial tumor that was a part of the old bigoted way that we used to do things in the way that we used to run society, the old paradigm, the old culture. It's not just non-preferable, it is heresy. If you don't know who you are, don't worry. You don't, you don't have to define yourself ever. Some narcissist freak sitting in a tiny stinking room in front of a cheap laptop and a Cheeto dust covered dragon dildo, they have the power over life itself. The ultimate Jenny. It's such a power, right? It's the power of definition backed up by the state. So even though it's all evil and it's all insane, it's still power, right? Because me fighting for the right to declare my child the biological sex he was born as and for him not to be raped and brainwashed by, you know, crypto Marxist political activists claiming to be women, well, I'm going to be thrown into the gulag along with JK because that's where we're headed. We are headed for pure authoritarianism. And really, you know, the, the trans incarnation of the left and of, of wokeism with the trans identity at the forefront is the ultimate authoritarian ideology because it has control state backed with violence over the very definition of a man and a woman. And these are things that we thought could only be defined by God, right? Well, in clown world, there's no God, right? And <laughs> I wonder if they'll let me take my Steam Deck with me into the Gulag because I don't know about you guys, but I think I'm getting a hankering for some wizarding, you know? I want to I wanna do some wizarding. In fact, you know, I, I think you can consider me the grand wizard of Hogwarts.